YouTube streaming. Started Sukrat. We are live now. All right, all right. So, uh, Kamla ma'am, with your permission, should I start? Yes, Sukrat. Go ahead. All right. All right. Uh, I hope the screen is visible. Anyway, <clears throat> okay. Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Business Data Management Best Capstone Project presentation hosted by IIT Madras BS Degree Program. My name is Sukrat, and I am honored to be uh, your host for this exciting event. Uh, today, we are here to celebrate the uh, incredible work of our students who have spent months collecting and analyzing data and developing solutions to uh, real-world business problems. Their hard work, creativity, and dedication have been truly impressive, and we can't wait to share their projects with you. Uh, today, we are also joined by uh, a diverse group of guests, uh, including industry leaders, academics, professionals, who will be offering their uh, valuable insights and feedback. Uh, their presence is a testament to the importance and relevance of uh, the event, and we are grateful for their support. Uh, to begin with, I'd like to introduce these professionals and top leaders from various reputed companies. Uh, from Aditya Billa, I believe we have Mr. Mani, Mani Gandhan. Uh, from ANSYS, we have Dr. Srinivasa Mohan. Uh, from Infosys, we have Victor uh, Sundaraj. Tiger Analytics, we have Mr. Binoy. From GAD, we have uh, Mr. Prasanna Ramakrishnan and Daisy Prasanna. Uh, LNT Constructions, we have from LNT Constructions, we have Dr. Divan uh, SS and uh, Dr. R. Kavita Lakshmi and Mr. Biju PK. From uh, Nano uh, Pix ISS Private Limited, we have Mr. Anup Vijaypur. Uh, from uh, in 22 Labs, we have Mr. Muthu Kumar. From the non Nissan, we have uh, Sai Kondura, Mr. Sai Kondaraju, uh, Shankar Subramaniam, that is Mr. Lalit Kumar, and Anand Kingsley, I, who I believe they will be joining in a bit. Uh, Trinity Life Sciences, from Trinity Life Sciences, we have Mr. Uh, N. Nabha, and uh, yeah, that, that's the limited list that I have right now. Uh, also with us, we have uh, uh, Mr. Uh, sorry, Professor uh, Andrew Talgaj and uh, Professor Vignesh, who are the coordinators of BS and uh, BS program. Along with them, we have Ms. Bharti, who heads the overall project. Um, Mr. Jayakrishnan, who uh, heads the, sorry, Dr. Jayakrishnan, who heads the uh, academic division, and Ms. Kamla, who heads corporate relations and placements. Uh, I would also like to extend my special thanks to Dr. Ashwin Baliga and Dr. Aditya, who have been doing a fabulous job by handling all the projects and ensuring that the students do a really good job. Uh, before this uh, said project is passed. Uh, I would also like to uh, welcome members from uh, various teams and also art uh, learners who are joined virtually via YouTube to share these peers. Welcome all and thank you for your presence. Uh, throughout the course of the event, we will be hearing from uh, five different uh, project teams, uh, each with their unique perspective and approach. Uh, we encourage you to engage with them, ask questions, and offer feedback uh, as they present their findings. So uh, please sit back and relax and enjoy the show. We uh, have an exciting uh, event ahead of us, and we can't share to, uh, wait to share it with you all. Okay, so to begin with, uh, I'll just start off with uh, the introduction of the first participant. Uh, to begin with, we have uh, Mr. Uh, Ashwin Hebar with us. He is the final year BSc student from Bangalore. I believe he just turned his camera on. Ashwin, can you please also start presenting? Uh, Ashwin likes to ponder and read about things related to science and business and technology, and he seeks to make a meaningful impact on the world one day. So uh, Ashwin, can you please say hello to everybody and start sharing your screen? You're on mute, you're on mute, you're on mute. Uh, okay, yeah, so uh, thank you for the very nice introduction, sir. Um, uh, may I start sharing now? Yes, please. Okay, great. Uh, can I get a confirmation of my screen? Yes, 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 yes. Great. Um, okay. Um, so, hey all, good morning. Uh, everybody present here. My name is Ashwin, and uh, this is my business data management project. Uh, so, my, my project is titled Improving Production Quality and Inspection Process of uh, Automobile Component Manufacturing. Basically, we'll be looking at uh, statistical quality control data and uh, just uh, looking at it, you know, trying to get some uh, suggestions out of it, insights out of it, and uh, 
So uh, let's just talk about the company that uh, that uh, I have worked with. So I work with the company called uh, Seal Tight Distance, uh, which is a company based in Bangalore. They are from the Bombasundra industrial area in Bangalore. Uh, they are a tier two automobile OEM manufacturer, uh, which uh, in layman's terms, it basically means that uh, they basically provide uh, in, uh, provide components to the companies that provide components to the uh, companies you and me. Say for example, like say like there was a brake component that was there. So in the brake component, there will be smaller components that are there. So these smaller components are manufactured by these uh, tier two OEMs and are provided to the tier one OEMs. And these tier one OEMs give it to the companies you and me. Say, like, say for example, Renault, Tesla, uh, whatever it may be. So um, that is about the company. Uh, so I will be looking at the problems uh, that we'll be uh, uh, dealing with here. First one is the rejection rate. Uh, just kind of understanding why the components are rejected uh, and how it can be, how such a thing can be prevented first of all. And second of all is the inspection time, which is improving the time taken in the inspection process, which is currently it is a completely manual process in this firm at least. So, you know, looking at any potential solutions that, uh, that could uh, uh, decrease the amount of time taken during the inspection. Uh, so that is what will be, uh, that is the problem statements we'll be uh, trying to solve. Uh, looking at the data overview, uh, so here I've uh, collected two major categories of data. First one is something called as uh, red bin analysis. So red bin analysis is basically a record of all rejected pieces for a given month. And, you know, thorough inspection is done for every rejected piece. So these, these components are very small, like uh, they're basically pressed uh, metal components and they're very small. And then every single component is basically uh um, examine when it's rejected and it, it's put into a generalized category maybe it's a dent issue maybe it's a scratch issue or something like that uh with the reason so the reason of rejection is also noted here uh so that is what we'll be dealing with a total of uh, three months worth of data was collected for the same uh and next one we have tool, ca tool calibration analysis which is uh, just a quick look at um, the data for the month of may 2022 where we basically check uh, the caliper measured tolerance testing of the machines used in the manufacturing of these uh, very components that we are talking about. So this process is done once every three months and uh, I'll go into why I specifically took for May 2022 as I go through this presentation, but uh, that's the kind of data we have collected here. So let's just look at the analysis overview here. So first we'll be doing a preliminary Pareto analysis and then we'll also be doing a cost of food quality analysis. Finally, we'll be using some uh, usual uh, SQC methodologies uh, for uh, analyzing how well the machines are actually manufacturing these said components. Um, so let's go with the Pareto analysis first. So basically a preliminary analysis was done to check if uh, the rejected goods follow the Pareto principle. Uh, this was done to decide upon the further steps just to kind of understand how the data behaves and uh, you know the further steps that, that have to be taken for the data. Uh, some things that I learned from the Pareto analysis was that uh, rejection reasons do follow the Pareto principle closely. Uh, I'm not sure if I can log. Yeah, so I can zoom here. So if you look at it here, so thread no go not answer dent mark and line mark for the highest number of uh, issues uh, that was there. So um, yeah, so we so it does actually follow the Pareto principle very closely. Analysis was done for all of the months individually as well as cumulatively for all three months to make sure that there was no outliers or any issues on that aspect. The main culprits for rejection were thread no-go issue, uh, dent mark and line mark. Dent mark and line mark seems uh, pretty obvious, but then thread no-go issue is basically the result of uh, this tool. Uh, let me see my uh, pointer. So this tool that is called as a go no-go tool, basically, like, let's say there was a hole drill and uh, we wanted to be of some exact tolerance. So basically, uh, this side was 7 mm and this, this side was 7 mm and 0.5 mm extra. So we basically check if this, this hole is in that exact tolerance that we want. So it uh, turns out that no other anomaly was found in the monthly Pareto analysis, apart from the fact that it actually very closely follows the Pareto principle. Uh, so, the, so next I went to the cost of food quality, uh, which is basically a measure of how the firm is, how much the firm is losing in terms of uh, money as a result of the uh, defective and non, non accepted goods. So companies use this measure to determine and recognize the points of manufacturing points in the manufacturing process where defects often occur and kind of uh, try to improve upon them. So when I analyzed this data in here, I found an interesting uh, relevation and that is that for the month of May, uh, it turns out that half the half of all the uh, rejected uh, the revenue revenue loss due to rejection was during only the month of May. So April was around 30% and June was around 22%, but uh, May was almost 46%. So I went back to the data, kind of looked at why such a thing is happening. Uh, 
uh, and then uh, it finally, uh, as you can see here, it turns out that uh, in, in terms of rent mark, there was a lot of issues during the month of May, almost double than any other month combined, uh, any, other, any, any other month. So there was some issue there. So that was something that I found. So, uh, so yeah, like in found me abnormally high rejected pieces uh, on further analysis. The reasons was this for identified as wrong steps taken during the manufacturing of a certain unit. So I spoke to the owner and uh, that is what uh, he told me. So next I, now that I knew that there was a issue with the May data, I went on to look at the SQC. I went on to do some SQC analysis on the May data. Uh, which leads me to the SQC part of uh, this uh, this project. Uh, it, it is based SQC is basically the application of statistics method in order to mon monitor and control the quality of a production process. So this basically helps us to ensure that the process itself is uh, operating efficiently, producing the the specification conforming products with less waste. So in this case, we have analyzed that uh, the calibration test for one of the data. Uh, in this case, we've taken something called as Clevis which I'll show you a picture of in the next, uh, in the further slide. Uh, so this was, uh, it, this was tested during the month of May 2022, like I said, because I saw an anomaly in this specific month. So I conducted an X bar and R chart analysis for this. Um, and just talking about the data here. Um, so basically we, I took 10 samples and five, uh, five uh, readings of the same sample. This X bar value is basically an average of all of these five, uh, sam all of these five readings. And it's basically in like an average value for, uh, every sample and the range value is the maximum uh, uh, checked here and the minimum maximum minus minimum for every sample so um, so i have 10 10 10 samples and five readings for uh, each sample so after, when we look at the uh, x bar and r charts for these things uh, we realize that the process itself is actually in control so uh, for anybody uh, you know just just kind of getting into the nitty gritty details here so the x double bar which is basically like the average of all of these x values was 7.75 as it's mentioned here and the r bar was uh, r bar was 0 0.12 so it turns out that the process itself is in uh, control here the upper and lower limits that i've taken here is basically three three times uh, the standard error the reason why i took that is assuming that uh, this whole thing follows a normal distribution uh, three times the standard error value basically takes 99 over 99 percent of everything all the uh, readings that were there except the very massive outliers so basically we understood through this that the process itself is actually in control both in terms of x bar and r uh, x bar charts actually uh, focuses more on the accuracy of the uh, measurement and r chart is more like on the precision of the measurement uh, so yeah both of them are within limits so it makes sense that uh, this is this process is in fact in control uh, on a later time i i contacted the firm asking about this uh, saying that the machines seem to be in, uh, working well so the problem was you know basically uh, a human error probably which was one of the things that uh, that uh, that we discovered so uh, so this concludes the analysis part of my uh, project so let's go with the suggestions and recommendations that i gave for the firm first one for reducing the rejection rates obviously the timely maintenance of the machines although we did not see any anomalies in the machine itself here it is always a good idea to make sure that your machines the things that are working uh, pretty much most of the days uh, machines that uh, you know manufacture your components are well oiled you know maintained well all that uh, next is proper training of the factory staff uh, obviously so during the month of may we did see that there due to a human error we lost quite a lot of revenue so uh, you know proper training is very much required so reducing human interference as much as possible during the middle of the manufacturing process so the way this manufacturing process works is after every step uh, a laborer has basically has to take it, put it in the, put it in the next machine, you know, press it in a, press it in a specific manner and then go to the next part of the process. So this is a manual process. So this can be, uh, you know, uh, this can be reduced. The human interference can be reduced, uh, through, um, can be reduced in this process, uh, if we can automate it in some way. And for reducing the time taken in the inspection, turns out this was, this was a problem that cannot exactly be solved with data because the only data we could collect was the amount of time required for the person to uh for a given component to go from uh um you know uh, from 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 it being just raw material to a finished product so hiring staff is uh, more profitable in 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 this uh, industry than uh, turns out at the scale that we are working here uh at, at, the, at the scale that the company is working at Hiring staff is more profitable for the company than industry grade machines for the inspection process. So it still has to be manual in some or the other way uh, because it doesn't really make long term or short term sense for the company to 
uh, buy uh, an industry grade machine by spending lakhs of rupees. Um, one more solution that I suggested was indigenous solutions. So maybe they can hire an engineer or two that can develop small, small solutions through maybe like a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino or something like that through which they can, um, you know, develop some kind of solution through that automate some part of the work, at least for the uh, workers that are there in the factory. So one more thing we also looked at was the re was restructuring the location of the inspection section, kind of making it closer to the loading section. In the factory, what was happening was uh, the, the loading section was in one corner of the factory. The inspection section was in another corner of the factory. The raw material was in another corner. So if we can kind of optimize all of these things in a, in a way that uh, basically uh, it, minimum time is taken between traveling between these things, because these are very big objects. Right? It takes time for them to take it from one place to another. Uh, we can actually save out on a lot of time. Uh, so that was also one thing uh, that I, I was able to suggest. Um, with that being said, that brings me to the end of my uh, presentation. So just to kind of show you guys, this was the clavy part. So these things are basically used in our um, in the cars you and me use every day. Uh, they, these are these part, these things are a part of the brakes. So um, so this is a worker working in the factory. Uh, and finally, we also have the red bin analysis that I talked about in the second slide. Uh, that brings us uh, towards the end of my presentation. I would like to thank uh, Mr. Ranganath, Mr. Ramesh, uh, who were very cooperative with me for this, uh, for help helping me just kind of procure the data, help them out, uh, help, help the firm up. And obviously, I'd like to thank the teachers, which are very supportive, and uh, and also for giving me this uh, great opportunity. Thank you so much. Hey, thank, thanks, uh, Ashwin. Uh, so that I believe uh, Mr. Sai has some questions. He's raised his hand. Uh, so can you unmute and uh, ask? Good morning, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Shukant, uh, for taking giving me this opportunity to raise the question. I will not be long. Just uh, Ashwin, uh, first of all, I would appreciate you for the kind of detailed study you have done. Thank so you, since uh, it is a automotive related thing that I have chosen myself uh, to ask some questions just to have the clarity. So yes, you said there are three major defects based on the Pareto. One is right, on this sir. dimension based, the go, go, no, uh, go and no go. And also yes, there were uh, some dent marks and line marks. Correct. Uh, these uh, errors are also very critical errors where the, the sample is getting, I mean, the part is getting rejected. Is that so critical? Um, sir, uh, since we'll be using this in auto automobile components, see, there is like really two things here. First of all, uh, these are high, high, uh, basically these are high, high priority uh, components, right? We can't, we don't want these components to fail. We don't want the brake in a car to fail. So it is not wise for us to use uh, components that are, that are first of all defective. And there is also this uh, notion of, uh, it, the company's image is basically at uh, uh, question here, because if you give, give out defective products, uh, it's not a good image for the company itself. So what what this company in this specific case they do is they just uh, blanket reject uh, any kind of issues that are there and they just uh, do it from the scratch from the raw materials. Okay. Be before seeing the nature of the the scratch or uh, whatever the defect, I don't want to comment deeply. Just uh, because you were touching multiple parameters, right? One interesting is the cost of quality, the cost of rejection, right? Yes. Sir. As yes, far as the functionality of the part. I can definitely understand uh, you are going for this no-go gauge if it is having a different size than that of it is designed for. So mm -hmm. definitely this ought to be rejected and it is a safety critical component, no compromise. True. With respect to the other portion, right, some line mark, dent I cannot comment, maybe it can have a stru uh, some strength related issue, that's why I don't want mm -hmm. to comment. Scratch marks uh, could be one thing. Uh, okay, that's a different thing. And uh, also, I liked your observation on the material flow. The way the how the material is getting transferred within that unit, and you made some good observation. I would appreciate you for that. Thank, Thank you so you much for the good preparation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Sai. Uh, is there anything else? Yeah. Is there any other person who would like to ask a question? Uh, hi, Sukrat. Uh, may I? Yes, ma'am, please. Yeah. Uh, uh, good morning. Thanks. Uh, good morning, Nashwin. Uh, very well presented. Uh, just a few Thank questions you. that I had and clarifications, maybe. Um, mm -hmm. 
you started with statistical and you three months of data which in uh, ma'am could you please repeat that uh, out of the issues Yes, ma'am. My voice has been breaking. Uh, oh, okay. Can you type it or say try saying it again? Is it any better now? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I was just asking um, that you started the statistic and analysis, and only in the month of May you found uh, outliers in the number of uh, occurrences. But how did you conclude it to be human errors? Is what I am not too clear on. Uh, ma'am this is actually a uh, question i asked for the uh, firm owner uh, after see the the way this project worked was i initially just collected the 3 months worth of data without the sqc data right uh, then i realized that there was some lots of anomaly in the during the month of may because uh, compared to the month of april there is almost three times as much rejection rates in uh, the ted park so then i realized that okay then maybe there is the owner has to say something about it then i contacted him he said that um there is an issue there was a human error uh, on our end so that is why we uh, we had to reject a lot of pieces and that is how i got to know that this was a human error understood okay thanks ashwin thank you hi ashwin uh hello sir yeah uh, i think this was a, a very nice presentation i am not uh, from the automobile industry but uh, uh, i have some questions uh, from your recommendation point of view so you yes, were sir. that uh, for reducing the time taken for the inspection uh, you need to have more staff right uh, so that will really reduce the time or uh, how is it uh so uh, can you come again please so for reducing the time taken for the inspection you are saying hiring staff is more profitable but uh, yes, the profit uh, is one part but uh, the objective is to reduce the time right for the inspection right. so, so um yes so my approach to this was initially i thought i could put in like maybe like an industry grade machine that will basically do the job uh, automate completely automate the job of uh, you know checking for uh, inspections inspection errors all that uh, so in that context uh, we considered if you know actually buying a machine would be cheaper in the long and short term than just hiring staff by hiring staff i mean just keeping the staff that are already there in the factory uh, so it turns out that it is a lot more profitable for the firm itself to just have uh, manual labor done rather than actual machines that are uh, that has to be bought which is you know kind of an investment in itself so that is why i put that point in sir yeah but uh, here actually you are dealing with another problem that uh, more stuff means more errors also can come right because a lot of uh, uh, human errors also you have uh, reported it is happening yes sir yeah. true true um say so for that i i think i put one more point as well saying uh, training of staff is very important um yeah i mean that is i think that's a very fair point because uh, humans at the end of the day uh, even with a lot of uh, you know repetitive tasks humans are simply not good at uh i think we'll have to settle on some kind of middle ground on that front because uh, you know it doesn't make sense for the company to buy machines uh, if both in the long end as well as the short term because it's a very huge investment especially if you need industry grade machines that are certified to be giving a certain degree of accuracy uh, then it's a it's a huge investment for the company and you know the, i think that this is a middle ground that the companies uh, settled in at the end Right. I I think actually here you need to do the cost benefit analysis. See, investment is one part, but if the rejection rate is actually you know more, then actually uh, you have to really look at whether you know hiring more staff uh, uh, is worth than uh, automating the entire process, right? Right. Yeah. That's that's a that's a fair point, sir. I, I should have done a cost a cost benefit analysis. That is, yeah, that's something I should have done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. all right thank you so much ashwin thank you so much sir for your questions yes, um uh, since considering the time limitation we have uh, we'll jump to the next uh, presenter uh, thanks so much ashwin for your time uh, next up we have ashrit with us uh, ashrit is from chennai uh, and he done his uh, bachelor of engineering in mechanical engineering in kolkata and right now he is a diploma student with the us in india and mumbai Ashwin, are you ready? Uh, sorry, Ashwin. I'm ready. Okay.
and considering time boundation, let's keep the questions to five minutes and uh, the presentation to our marks of 10. Uh, is my screen visible? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, then I'll begin. Uh, good morning. I'm Ashrit. I'm from Chennai. I just completed my UG in B Mechanical and I begin my diploma in data science. So my project was about identifying areas where uh, a shop, an optometrics optical shop could expand its business to within the uh, local region. So, so this shop is uh, uh, near my residence. I met uh, the owner, uh, Mr. Shokumar, over a few days and uh, generally asked around. His shop has been uh, running well for over 15 years. It was founded in 2007. It's uh, established, it's successful. So it did not encounter any problems as such. Uh, what we did discover, however, was that he was, since he was very passionate about the business, he wanted to expand his uh, reach to more customers so they too could benefit from his uh, high quality eye testing and eye prescription services. So in this shop, what happens is people come in. Uh, it's a very traditional optic shop. People come in and uh, get their eyes tested for free. Once that is done, uh, he prescribes the eye lenses. He co then contacts a manufacturer who gets the lenses uh, cut and uh, cut the specifications that he provides. And one, it arrives within two days. And uh, the customers who leave their addresses behind can also get the option of home delivery. Otherwise, they can come and collect at the shop. So this uh, this is the idea behind uh, the project. The background of the problem is that uh, we discovered that with these addresses that were collected, I could perform a geographical analysis and determine where in the city he has customers. And from that information, we can figure out where he can, uh, where he doesn't have any customers right now and focus his advertising efforts on so that uh, more customers can reach his shop. So a uh, few photos of the storefront and the store interior. The rightmost picture is the data that he has collected in his sales reports. So uh, data was collected of the month of, uh, from June to December 2021. That was the latest data available since uh, the 2022 data was uh, taken for uh, end of year financial records of the shop itself. So this was the latest six months of data available for me. With that data, I took out all the street level data and plotted it onto a map. I did not take house level data since it would be uh, invading privacy and also because uh, that much data was not available in the data. Uh, but until street level data, it was uh, very clear. And I did not take uh, just until neighborhood also because it would be too vague and uh, too uh, large scope of an analysis. So the street analysis uh, was the correct uh, bird locks region. With that, I classified the streets once they were plotted onto the map. I used Scribble Maps, which was an online map editor. With, uh, I colored uh, streets that had only one customer coming from them as a uh, light colored in light blue color and progressively darker colors for streets that, had, uh, with, that were denser with customers. Once that was plotted, I noticed that most customers came from uh, within Chennai. There are a few customers outside. I had to ignore them for, uh, the, uh, for to restrict the scope of this project. Within Chennai, most customers came from, all customers came from within 9.5 kilometers from the shop. The shop is a little uh, violet dot in the middle. And the, uh, that represents the outer circle, the bigger circle. But within that circle, uh, representing about 75 to 80 percent of the customers was the uh, inner region. I chose this as the uh, region of analysis for uh, my further study. And within uh, here, once the streets were classified, I deployed a grid in this uh, smaller region of analysis. Once that region was uh, established with the grid, I had to choose uh, the unit square size because if the square was too large, that would result in a very vague and a very non descriptive analysis. Whereas if the squares were too small, it would result in a very uh, congested analysis with lots of uh, information, just a lot of zones with no uh, data on them because the streets were limited. And with this, uh, once the zone was each square, I named it into a zone and numbered it. And once each zone was uh, identified, I gave each zone two uh, scores. One was based on the distance, which I called the distance score from the shop. The shop is the violet uh, marker that's uh, visible near the top. And uh, the other score was the density score represented by the number of streets that was present in each zone. So once I had those two scores, I normalized uh, the scores and gave them a rank. So now I had a list of 84 zones, but uh, I had to uh, fine tune this for um, easier recommendation. The idea is that if I identify which squares are more suited for advertising and promotional activities from this data, I could uh, recommend them for uh, further uh, promotional activity. So with this in mind, I did a uh, uh, region-wise analysis. I took bands of the 
and zones from uh, horizontal bands for uh, north south analysis and uh, uh, vertical bands for west east analysis with that uh, i drew a graph so that uh, we could uh, see where the tips and peaks were in terms of customers in densities so uh, the east west graph did not uh, realize much uh, details because it just said that uh, people were uh, denser around the shop but the north south graph showed that there was a peak in customer density around uh, one, around a kilometer south of the shop so uh, with that in mind i began eliminating zones that were unsuitable there were some zones that were in national parks some were military quarters and uh, one particular zone was predominantly lake zone so i excluded that from the my recommended list and uh, i also recommended zones that were too dense with customers already because uh, those zones already knew of the business presence so i with uh, there is no further uh, benefit in advertising in those regions so i eliminated those zones and zones that were too far away were given lower priority compared to zones that were closer and didn't know the shop so that advertising could get more bang for buck and uh, with those uh, and uh, due to symmetry in the zones because zone for example zone 39 is as close to the shop as zone 45 uh, depending on the streets that were in the zone both zones could get the same score and rank to break those uh, equalities i took a uh, concentration of street classes for example if a street with a denser street was uh, if a zone with a denser street was present compared to a zone with uh, no streets it was given lower priority because the, the this zone had more uh, knowledge of the shop compared to the zone that had uh, no knowledge of the shop and with all these the and with the use of these directional trends also i broke all the equal rank zones and uh, provided a list of uh, 57 zones in total that uh, could be uh, uh, prime regions for advertising and expanding the business reach of the uh, shop so with, this is a small list of uh, the first 10 rank zones uh, these were communicated to the business and i also grouped the zones that were higher ranking according to their uh, <coughs> suitability the darker regions uh, the, the darker shaded regions are more uh, higher rank zones and the lighter shaded regions like zone 5 which is in yellow are uh, less recommended regions but still they are recommended the under the uncolored zones are not recommended for any further advertising and the red colored zones are unsuitable because they are part of national parks or uh, similar sparsely populated areas uh, so I, this map and the uh, list of 57 rank zones were provided to the shop and this is the zoomable uh, interactive application the scribble maps online editor that was provided uh, to the shop to make its addition these markers along with the zones provided enough uh, direct geographical detail to get all the information at in a glance uh, that concludes my project and thank you. thank you for everyone for providing this opportunity thank you so much ashit uh, ashit uh, and others uh, the panel that is there uh, it's just a small request so we will be entertaining a couple of questions after every presentation and uh, we can have a longer uh, discussion about the projects once all uh, the presentations are done and uh, you know people are sent out so uh, if in case right now anybody has any question they may raise their hand or unmute and uh, ask us to take any question do we have questions on board any feedback about the work he has done to that also would be appreciated if you know question seven any feedback would be great to have yes sir anup yeah uh, then this is sai speaking again and just have a quick word it's a very extensive uh, search done for a small business maybe it is going to be really helpful for him i would uh, suppose just only uh, just as a food for thought for astrities to revisit the suggestion after a period of time maybe 3 months or 6 months just to calibrate sure sir thank you thank you so much thank you hello sir yeah uh, ashit uh, first of all uh, good work done uh, i think a lot of things uh, are done very nicely here uh, only a couple of things i had in terms of the approach is the Uh, you're looking at a recommendation for uh, you know the advertisement or promotion as one aspect i mean what i would i would have additionally done apart from this is that you know uh, from where are the people maximum coming I mean, which region is will is having maximum footfall or what is the trend around my uh, you know location how is the footfall happening based on that correlation if i can derive a uh, you know promotional uh, material i mean one is based on the uh, the addresses that is there that you are saying these are the locations where if you promote you can have more people 
is one definite aspect. But also to correlate that data with another uh, viewpoint where you can see uh, how is the current football happening, what could be the reasons, we can articulate uh, through the data and then identify those reasons and correlate that with your promotion data would be a, a better approach to what you have done. Sure, sir. Thank you. I'll keep touching Thank you so much, Anup, sir. Uh, I believe there are no more uh, comments on uh, this presentation. So we'll be moving to the next participant. Uh, with us uh, in the next slide, uh, we have uh, Mr. Mahesh Badi. Uh, he's been a uh, banking professional since the past 19 years and has experience in fraud risk analysis and code banking. And uh, he specializes in SQL, Python, machine learning for, for, for fraud detection. And he's currently pursuing MSc in analytics and OBS from us uh, in the data science uh, domain. Uh, Mahesh, sir, are you are ready to share? I believe, yes, we can see your screen. So uh, all the best. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, 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 good morning, uh, uh, everybody. Uh, my project uh, is basically on the is based on the mutual fund industry. I hope you can hear me. I I hope I am audible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So uh, my presentation is based on the mutual fund industry. I have been uh, working in the banking space. So uh, basically, uh, my project was uh, for a broking company, a small uh, a broking firm located in Mumbai, and uh, which is uh, basically impaneled to sell mutual funds uh, of multiple fund houses. So typically, each fund house has got, you know, he is impaneled around 20 fund houses, and each fund house, you know, they have multiple funds. So approximately 2,500 funds uh, is what uh, uh, they have in their bouquet of schemes. And uh, they have slowly started building up the business, uh, first as individual, uh, you know, one or two persons, and now they have, uh, uh, you know, developed a website and uh, developed, uh, they are located in Pancharatna building, which is a diamond market, basically of Bombay. So they have been able to build up their business and they have some, uh, you know, uh, starting from say 100 customers, they have increased to 485 after launching of a website. They have a, an average AUM of some approximately 25 lakhs assets under management for, for each customer. And uh, now, uh, since they are getting, uh, the basic thing was that I wanted to understand how to streamline or what are the issues that they are facing while processing the transactions. So this was, uh, you know, uh, a process uh, uh, analysis that was done of their of their business, the operational process. And I have a deployed uh, basically a Six Sigma uh, methodology to analyze the, the product, uh, the, their services. And uh, accordingly, what we found is that they are having, uh, you know, being a financial uh, uh, vendor, you know, product vendor, uh, they need to have very low defect rate because even though they are having 100 transactions, uh, you know, uh, sorry, per day, they are having uh, a 1% defect rate, which is uh, what we felt was quite high because uh, for every transaction, the amount varies, you know. So for some customers, the transaction may be just 10,000. For some, it may be 1 lakh. Some, it may be even few crores. So when it comes to corporates. So, you know, you cannot afford to have any defects or at least you have to reduce them to a minimum. So to build your reputation and to, uh, you know, gain the confidence of the customers. So the idea was to uh, analyze the transactions and uh, uh, fix the, uh, basically reduce the defect per uh, per day, you know, the per day uh, defects should be reduced. That was the basic idea of the, uh, of the, of the uh, uh, you know, uh, project study. So we, I, I had uh, taken, uh, I was, first of all, it was a little difficult to get the transaction data. I had initially tried to get it from my own company, but uh, uh, it was uh, becoming a little difficult. So then I had uh, got it from the vendor, uh, from, from this broker. So he gave me uh, only for a few days uh, transaction data. And uh, the objective that we finally defined was that defects divided by total transactions for the day should be uh, the minimal. So uh, what we found is that, uh, uh, you know, we plotted in a histogram and we found it is like a kind of a right skewed uh, chart. And uh, so that uh, basically what happens typically in the market is that uh, on a day to day basis, uh, you know, as your transaction volumes keeps increasing uh, on some days, the market goes up and some days it goes down. So depending on the market fluctuations, we find typically that the transactions for the day also keep varying. And uh, 
we found that when the transaction volume start peaking at that point of time the defects are also increasing because of the higher pressure that is there in the operation staff so uh, for that purpose i had uh, analyzed their uh, you know uh, the operations workflow and uh, you know i plotted all the uh, you know touch points it's like a, a sort of a, you know uh, to visually map out the process and uh, identify motion and, and you know transfer based basically so uh, like starting from the customer the customer can input transactions through email through a website or you can send it through fax now all this go or he can approach the rm you know and all this then flows to operations so if you can see right at the center the operations is getting the maximum uh, input so it's like uh, operations is kind of become the bottleneck out here so then the operations has to interact with the mutual fund system then it has to generate the transaction files now each transaction files is having 160 columns so it's a dba file a database file which is generated which is having more than 160 uh, uh, data points that have to be captured and then they have to be reported to uh, the registrars that is cams and carvi so once that is reported then the next day we get a reverse confirmation file but the the critical factor out here is that from 9 o'clock till 3 o'clock the is the window to report the transactions after 3 pm the cut off you cannot report any transactions it will be processed only for next day so and also in cams the website itself shuts down so you are not able to even upload any transactions so considering all this uh, uh, i i uh, i had uh, you know done some brainstorming and uh, we analyzed uh, you know like a, a fishbone diagram basically is uh, for for brainstorming purpose to identify what are the steps we can take to uh, you know basically reduce the uh, rate errors so for instance uh, one suggestion was that we should increase the staff uh, the number of staff but then that would have a uh, you know cost effect on the vendor because it's not such a huge business that he should be managing so many people and uh, you know sometimes having more people in operations sometimes becomes also you know can, can end up becoming a, a problem so then uh, if they are not optimally utilized basically then uh, uh, another thing was that you know maybe we could change the timings maybe have some sort of shifts start uh, at 7 am instead of having so that you know he, he have a bigger window to process the transactions so that was the uh, so they can start the day at 7 am until 3 pm which is the most critical uh, window so they can uh, uh, they get 2 hours extra then uh, any non core activities could be done after 3 pm those could be shifted Uh, to a later time then uh, maybe stop some fax and email channels but then that would be amount to uh, you know so uh, stopping the fax and email channels was suggested because uh, very few transactions come through those channels but that is just a way of uh, giving comfort to the customer that uh, we can process we, whatever tools are available to you because some of the senior customers are not comfortable uh, submitting transactions through uh, uh, you know uh, through website so then they use their own traditional uh, whatever ways they are suit comfortable with then we have this uh, you know we could directly have a connection with the registrar's websites but uh, what we thought was that these uh, uh, you know correct connection directly to the registrar's website would uh, would be a little bit of, of an expensive proposition and uh, considering that uh, it's, we are not such a big broker it will be a little bit uh, uh, difficult to get full cooperation from the registrar so that would be also a little bit of a challenge we felt so then uh, you know uh, the, uh, also you know batch frequencies could be changed so ultimately the one final uh, uh, approach that we uh, one another suggestion was that we could you know uh, if the registrar could permit we could upload all transactions as 100 files uh, uh, you know 100 transactions in in one file uh, and upload them at one shot if that suggestion we could give but for that we we need to have uh, you know larger volumes to give this kind of suggestions to uh, we felt to the registrars so the final thing that we what we option we got was that we will probably uh, 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 go for robotic process automation you know robotic process automation through with the use of python and uh, uh, you know which will uh, the operations just has to trigger the 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 process and then the rest of the thing would be Uh, uh done through uh, uh, rpa so the the basically uh, uh, uh so as an improved phase what i'm what i have mentioned out here is uh, is that robotic process automation will be implemented so that transaction generated by a batch 
can be reported in 15 minutes instead of two hours. Because what happens out here is that uh, the operations person has to check the, the, all the transactions uh, received on the website. For the, each of them, the files have been generated. And then he has to make sure that he has uploaded all the files. And uh, the upload is like one by one, one by one, he has to do the uploads. And uh, and if there's errors that come, then he has to fix those errors. So all those all those things uh, come in place. So uh, uh, RPA, what we felt was that you know instead of manually touching the file, uh, it may be better to uh, fix the uh, transaction reporting directly through because that will also you know help uh, first of all speeding up the process to a large extent, and uh, uh, operations will have much more free time to monitor. The, the process, the transaction generation, execution, and uh, uh, and pro uh, uploads, and also reconcile the data. So control aspects will be much more uh, stronger if they are having free time, uh, time away from uh, operational activities to monitoring activities. So uh, basically, now operations has only uh, as part of the control phase. Uh, you know, the operation now user will have only a primary activity to only process transactions through email, fax, and walk-in walk channels instead of, uh, you know, uh, collating data from all of the sources and then trying to do uh, only 1% of the transactions they will have to process manually. So that is the only uh, activity that they have to do, uh, hand, handle manually, monitor manually. Then uh, 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 the auto batch generation will be executed from mutual fund system. This will be as usual. The operations will trigger the RPA bots. Uh, to report these transactions to the registrar automatically. And RPA bots will capture the upload details timestamp and send an email, uh, uh, then send an email to operations as an acknowledgement of the transaction successful execution. So basically what happens is uh, once all the transactions are uploaded, uh, CAMS and CARBA give you a report. You know, So the, the, the report can be downloaded and pushed to operations through an email. So uh, through, the, through the program. So operations officer will only monitor the MIS received from the RPA bots every two hours. And in case of system breakdown notice due to uh, registrar site not being available. So only he has to do basically the monitoring work uh, at the end of the day. So all the solution was ended up being quite uh, streamlined, but uh, simple. But uh, you know, uh, the, the pain points were uh, addressed because of uh, this process. Yeah, that, that's it uh, from my side. So. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mahesh. Uh, sir, I see Mr. Sai has some question already. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Maheshi, for uh, summarizing uh, this data well. The, but I, yes, one portion I did not catch. Yes, sir. Uh, this is on the result of your root cause analysis. Okay. Uh, was it uh, out of scope or uh, you haven't uh, found a solution? Because you, you did a nice uh, extensive study on the fishbone diagram. Correct. But did you identify the root cause? Why those errors were happening? Basically, because of fluctuation in transaction volumes. Because uh, now, mm -hmm. uh, supposing uh, uh, I'm having, I need in operations, I need at least two people. You know, as a maker checker, I require at least two people on board. Now, if I then I have to hire a kind of uh, you know, if I keep one checker, then I have to hire one more one more person. But uh, what we felt is, and see, it's not such a big business. So if I'm hiring a person for three lakhs uh, rupees, you know, uh, uh, three people will amount to nine lakh rupees uh, per annum. So considering, uh, uh, you know, the business size and the business volume, we felt that uh, instead of hiring people, you know, if we have a simple uh, program, a Python program that can be executed and monitored, maybe on a on a, uh, you know, already he's paying the vendor uh, the uh, the management are already paying nine lakhs per uh, per annum for this. If we hire more people, the business will stop being so viable, you know. And you know how the uh, mutual fund the fees are just one percent per transaction, less than one percent for a number of transactions. So considering the margins that are available in this particular business, also we don't want to in increase the fixed cost. Uh, so from that point of view, we wanted to uh, go with the RP. That was and also, sir, what happens is. Considering financial transactions, there is a risk that supposing the file is tampered or supposing something happens. So from that point of view, also there's a protection using RPA. Yes, I am not doubting your solution, my Yes, sir. Yeah. Definitely, RPA could be a solution that might have be fitting your operations quite well, Correct. considering uh, considering the constraints you had. Correct. But if I could uh, summarize, so you are. Uh, 
you are feeling or you are finding is the human intervention is the source of his, uh, your errors. Yes, Correct? sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. That is what I, I just wanted to ask. Thank you. It was a good presentation. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Bijal, do you also have a question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, hi, Mahesh. Uh, I think this was a really uh, nice and a very extensive and uh, uh, in-depth study, what you have done. Okay. And uh, uh, what uh, uh, you were recommending that RPA could be a potential solution here, right? To improve the overall process. Correct. So uh, just want to suggest that uh, when we are actually using RPA, we have to, uh, it is better to quantify uh, also, okay, how much effort uh, we are going to save so that now you will come to know the overall effort reduction um, compared to the normal operations. And then actually you will be able to uh, match that with the uh, requirement. So I am not sure whether that is being done here or not. Uh, so there was a potential save of 1.5 uh, 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 manpower. So that is what we have arrived at. But uh, obviously that will be absorbed uh, once uh, business increases further. But, but uh, that was the potential save that we have identified considering okay. the time, considering the time factor and the uh, efforts and the controls. Controls would be improved, but yeah, considering the time factor save. Yes. Okay, okay. Then uh, that's good. Maybe I, I didn't uh, notice that. And uh, maybe actually you can also now look at uh, uh, how we can interface with the chat GPT because <laughs> that, yes, can, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. that can automate a lot of these processes. Correct, correct, correct. Right, yeah. Correct, sir, correct. Okay. Thanks. Nice presentation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, so we'll have further discussions once all the assignment, uh, all the presentations are over. But for now, sir, Mahesh, can you stop, please, uh, sharing your screen? Thanks. So next up, we have uh, Shashwat Tapkar with us. Uh, Shashwat is a data science with one and a half years of experience who also likes to play the harmonica. He uh, completed both the levels uh, of diploma in December 22, and he's a uh, graduate from Vix Pilani in uh, VE Electronics and Instrumentation. So, uh, Shashwat, uh, whenever you're ready, you can start sharing the screen. Shashwat, you're on mute. Hello, everyone. Yeah. My Is my screen visible? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hello everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Shashwat Kakkar and I hail from Mumbai. I completed the capstone project in the September term of 2022. My project is based on the human resources industry. With the power of data, I built a scalable recruitment model for tech companies based on the concepts I learned from the business data management, business analytics and machine learning courses taught in this program. I will now be sharing my experience of so solving a business problem with the help of data science. For any organization, it is important to hire people with the right skills for executing projects effectively. Tech industry is exponentially evolving with new technologies and tools being developed every year. In such a competitive environment, the job market is currently volatile. There is a shortage of cheap skilled labor. Talent acquisition cost for entry level position is increasingly recurrently increasing recurrently accompanied by considerable manpower and resources required for upskilling onboarded employees and high attrition rate at entry level positions. Talent Z Limited is a recruitment service provider specializing in the entry level job market. The company's major clientele is in the UK. To test the waters in the Indian job market, they have partnered up with SkillUp Online, a company specializing in skills training. TalentZ developed a recruitment model which would recommend upskilled candidates to the companies based on their customized evaluation framework. One of their MNC client who were looking for ways to increase their base in India with cost centers set up in Bangalore and Hyderabad, reached out to TalentZ with a requirement for 23 skilled full stack developers. TalentZ ran a 12-week pilot training program with skill up for training recent engineering graduates from CS Electronics background on the required skills. A bit of a background of the 12-week training program is that TalentZ reached out to tier 2, tier 3 engineering colleges with unplaced CS and electronics graduate. Received 1,200 plus resumes out of which 230 passed the initial aptitude screening test. 
post the phone interviews 70 candidates were shortlisted for the program talentzy offered the training program free of cost to the, to the candidates on the condition that they would physically attend from one of the training centers in bangalore and hyderabad finally 46 candidates joined the training program after successful training completion as this was a pilot project the mnc decided to take one round of technical interview followed by hr interview for all the candidates 20 candidates received job offer in the end out of these 20 16 were from the top 23 ranked candidates recommended by talentzy's recruitment model indicating a successful pilot implementation the current demand for full stack developers in india is high with multiple offshore projects in development having done a successful pilot project with good returns talentzy was looking for ways to scale up this offering to other clients however before setting everything in stone they wanted an independent evaluation of the recruitment model and recommendations on optimizing the evaluation framework the training program was run by trainers hired by skill up online based on the trainer quality talentzy wanted to make sure that their partnership with skill up was viable for future terms as well considering the cost of running the program they were unsure whether they can reduce the number of weeks and still deliver similar result as it could become a be a requirement from a client in future for quicker recruitment talentzy also wanted to ensure that whether the training content and evaluations were up to mark or changes were needed for non industry relevant tests these were the additional requirements that came from talentzy during my discussion with the company director with the help of data analysis and machine learning i evaluated and recommended changes in the recruitment model going on to problem solving approach so i received two data sets from talentzy evaluation framework data and the final list of candidates hired by the company during the 12 week program nine evaluations were conducted with and all of them had certain weightages so we had attendance ccat score which was the initial screening test week 4 week 6 tests mid course trainer feedback on student performance week 8 and week 10 tests group capstone project and mock interview type practice initial data analysis was started with the individual statistical analysis of each evaluation this was done with the help of python libraries like pandas numpy and seaborn general observation done during the eda was that female to male ratio in training programs was less 1 to 3 gender equality and diversity is an important factor in many tech companies thereby suggest i suggested that to consider it as an important factor when they would screen or shortlist candidates for the training program efforts would be needed to increase this ratio to 1 to 2 or 1 to 1 as they may get such additional requirements in future this was followed by the evaluation framework weightage distribution analysis analysis was done to understand whether all the current evaluation components are necessary or not it was done with the help of statistics and concepts of significance scaling collinearity and multiple linear regression the python libraries used in this analysis are pandas scikit-learn stats model and plotly multiple linear regression model with the help of stats library was run on the evaluation framework only evaluations with around 99% confidence interval or p values less than 0.01 were considered as significant evaluations which would help achieve similar results out of the nine evaluations only five were considered significant although weightage of trainer feedback is suggested as only 5% by the model after running the decision tree model on the client selection criteria the contribution increases positive personal observations of the trainer on student behaviors and traits during the initial 6 weeks ended up with very high chances of that student getting selected by the company reaffirming the fact that along with strong foundations soft skill plays an important role for getting a job offer a personal human evaluation is helpful evaluation framework effectiveness is that since this is a pilot project the client also took their own round of technical and hr interview with 20 candidates being offered the job out of which 16 were from the top 23 ranked candidates recommended by the evaluation framework the effectiveness was analyzed with the help of classification models like decision tree provided by skllearn library this was done to simulate the probable selection criterias of the client for a successful candidate landing the job 
white box models like decision tree model was considered for its ability to mimic human thinking ability while taking decisions and with the help of the feature importance out of the five evaluations of the optimized framework four evaluations were considered important with varying weightages and moving on to the recommendations to talent z four evaluations with optimized weightage were considered for achieving similar results ensuring that the top upskilled candidates are recommended in line with the industry expectations trainer mid course feedback was an important evaluation in the decision making process of the client and also the ranking so this reaffirmed the fact that the good quality of training services provided by skill up online and hence i recommended them to continue their partnership with the help of the multi linear regression model i was able to identify the important evaluations week 4 test was not considered significant hence i recommended talent z to reduce the training program on site duration from 12 weeks to 8 weeks on site and enroll more candidates in the program virtually for the first 4 weeks and taking a screening test just like we do here in iit at the end of the 4 weeks this reduces the time and effort of skill up management worrying about the cost of getting more candidates initially enrolled as the training centers also have only certain capacity and the program is free of cost for the shortlisted candidates the short two week group capstone project was not considered as a significant evaluation and from this it could be inferred that individual contribution could not be properly evaluated by the company hence i recommended that keeping time constraint and role recommendation uh, role recommended uh, in mind that is full stack developer if writing efficient code for designing website is first priority for a company candidates should get comfortable with the coding practice on platforms like hacker rank code chef being used currently as a initial screening test by the industry and taking my recommendations into consideration the company director has decided to run a new pilot project this year and continue the collaboration with me thank you thanks uh, uh, thank you uh, sir, please go ahead please go ahead shukran Yeah, okay thank you shash for this uh, it was a really good uh, thing you have done a uh, extensive work i appreciate you for that so just uh, one uh, thing uh, uh, with respect to the fee the initial study you have done is it a kind of a result of where you uh, you made the extensive search or was it the current practice what they were doing so this was the current practice so based on my discussion with the company director and also with the skill up management team i got to understand their current practices and accordingly i then kind of created a customized model so that they can this is a kind of a repetitive model so that they don't have to i mean a few tweaks and balances here and there they can simply just offer this as a okay. package to any company okay excellent thank you so much it's a good thank work you. appreciate that thank you thank you we have another raise hand with us uh, prasanna ramakrishnan yeah uh, hi thanks uh, sukrat and thanks ashwat this is a good presentation um, just a quick question on this right how scalable is it uh, because you were on your uh, pardon i guess i lost you how much of a fit and play would it be for other technology if one is looking for um yes so this would also have some external factors to be considered into as in like when this model was suggested that shifting it from 12 weeks to 8 weeks so this is also taking into consideration some uh, you know we would get some requirements from the tech company that we would want faster uh, get quicker enrollment and also full stack development currently is a very well defined uh, role in the market and there are certain expectations that are there with entry level jobs so as it is as it is a standardized entry level job lot of uh, it, there won't be any there, there would be very few customizations that would be needed on the to on top of this model and this is mainly to also ensure that talent z can uh, deliver this kind of pilot these kind of projects effectively uh, in an optimized in terms of also cost Understood. Okay. Thanks, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks, Ashwat. Uh, with this, uh, we are moving on to our last uh, part uh, presenter. Uh, 
Thank we you. also were supposed to thank thanks so much, Ashwat. Uh, we also were supposed to have one more uh, participant called Ganesh Shetty, but unfortunately he was called off because of some uh, medical emergency. Uh, next up, we have uh, one of the most senior students we've had in the program, Mr. Uh, Subramanyam Mohan. He is a highly experienced mechanical engineer with over 41 years of experience in industries including oil, gas, LNG, NGL, uh, steel and coke. And his uh, expertise includes project development, execution, engineering, plant operations. Uh, as of now, he is uh, a student in the BS degree uh, program and he wishes to uh, provide professional advice to industry using data centric approaches. So, if we have you online, can you please start sharing? Uh, good morning to all of you. Rather than easy. A good afternoon. Uh, I think I'm audible to all of you. Yes, sir. So, if you could please start sharing your screen. Yeah, I shared the screen already. Sure. Uh, I can't see it. Are you able to see my screen? Not yet, sir. Okay. Now we can see it, sir. Very busy calendar for such. Okay, so can you pull down full screen? Yeah, I'm just trying. Thank you. I believe you need to open it via uh, your presentation uh, mode. Should I share it for you? Yeah, that, that would be better. One okay. minute, I'm just uh, I'm trying to get that along. Sure, sure, sure. In case you're not unable to do it, sir, it's okay. I, I, uh, I am here and uh, you can ask me to change the screen whenever you want. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Perfect. You can go to the first slide. Yeah, perfect. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I took up this project in a small and medium scale industry. The name of the company is Frame of Precision Technology. It's a small and medium scale enterprises company with a turnover less than two crores. It includes 15 operators and six staff, including MD. It's a job order facility with two horizontal turning center, two VMCs, and one VTL, the so vertical turning lathe. It includes one conventional lathe and a two grinding machine. It operates in a low margin profit area, less than 5% to 7% of a turnover. The project focus is study of manufacturing process related transaction and identify opportunities for process enhancement and infuse a data-centric approach across the company. The problem statement is the company functions in a firefighting mode, means they don't have any plan. As the market is sound and they do get the orders 
and the client companies are all very flexible because of the heavy demand and shortage of demand machining capacities in and around uh, the main area. Incidentally, I, I need to really position you what, what the environment here is. Uh, this company is operating in Coimbatore, and Coimbatore is becoming increasingly a valve outsourcing center for major multinational companies, mainly for oil and gas industries and the power plants and continuous processing industries. So most of the multinational companies have lined up the big investments in one area of the company. And the PPT, this company is one unit in the cluster of various industries. They're doing the parts for the walls. They are not the end product manufacturers, but they do supply the parts for the end product manufacturers. So the problem statement here is there is no dearth of demand, so no efficiency is really need to be really analyzed and you continue to do the way what you do the work but in the process they really lose a lot of money so the, the method of really doing the business is they do day-to-day -day issues as and when it arises never they learn from the history of mistakes every day is a learning relearning day no integrated data repository to integrate and learn from the past history mistakes and good performances. Potential not fully exploited, return on investment is only 5 to 7 percent, where the industry is easily around 10 to 12 percent. Though it has a business cycles, but on an average year, annualized return should be 10 to 12 percent, far above the normal banking uh, interest rates. No mindset to spend for unproductive assets means anything invested on the management information system or a data collection, data analysis, everything is an intangible benefit, not visible immediately, and not appreciated that it is going to really create into more money in the long run. So that is the biggest bottleneck. So the SWOT analysis of the environment where the company is operating. The strength of the company is all machines are brand new and it has a high availability, low maintenance requirements are needed. And proximity to consuming industries means you don't need to go and market it or you to need to run around to really find out the new orders. Logistically well connected because it is in a cluster, service to cluster, there is no need for looking around for higher services from a distance. Promoter seriousness and sound uh, search made. Incidentally, the, this company was promoted on the Prime Minister's campaign make in India by a company, uh, by a chemical engineer who was in US and doing some job in oil and gas industry. And he got really attracted, moved around and put it up. There was an upset initially, but subsequently going by, it's, it's almost five years. So after two to three years struggle, then he started really Feeling it good now. But the first three years, he found it a little bit waste of time. But situations are changing, and he is looking at good power. And his attitude is turning more and more positive, and he is looking forward for expanding it and going for collaborations. And uh, opportunities are government of India's Make in India drive. Replacement to Chinese uh, imports are becoming all the more prevalent in many parts of the world, and that has become. Automatically, India has become a part of a natural choice. More foreign direct investments in the manufacturing industries and defense industries, high level of comp componentization makes the small scale industries more attractive to really invest in the manufacturing facilities. Indian manufacturing caught up gold scale quality because currently our manufacturing qualities are significantly improved and <clears throat> The countries like Japan and other places are really giving a preferential treatment to source out the items from our country. And weakness is lack of skill development. Uh, the demand is so high that you don't have the skilled people readily available. And the skill development the setups are also coming down. And government has now only recognized and they're trying to put up a skill development centers at various parts of the country and climate is one of it. Increasing input costs, it's an always an uptrend in the input materials cost, but the rate at which 
the company is getting compensated is fixed for quite some time, sometime even for three years, the rates are not changing. A lack of collective representation. So there's a cutthroat competition is going on. And if you really feel that your rates are quite high, your rate, your cost is very, very high and your rates are not really compensating yet adequately, it has to be a force on you to really look into your cost of manufacturing, not really go and really represent it for higher rates. That's the way it's going on. And poor negotiability for higher man hour rates, vertical and horizontal integration barriers, because you, you set up a set up a custom made facilities and that could really work on machining the parts and you don't have the front end engineering capacity capabilities and the back end assembly and the uh, testing facilities are not there. So that way you, you are really locked up between these two constraints and that has become a big bottleneck in, in managing the cost. Threats are easy entry. There is nothing if you really want to enter into the industry, you've got to have money in hand. And the government is giving us nearly 25% subsidy and you've got to have facilities which can you can lay it out. So the entry barriers are very limited. There are, very, there are many guys that are entering in. There's a mad rush happening. Severe, severe competition for man, man hour rate has more and more machining capacity is coming in. The man hour rates are keep falling. Non-availability of local labor. There is not skilled labors are not locally available. And if you are bringing them in, there is a lot of uh, settlement problems are happening. And uh, in addition to that one, they hardly could stay around two years or three years. And, uh, and the next you know, the industry is that one can grow to limited extent. So you, he cannot grow beyond certain level. That really causes the employees that keep moving because they find the green pastures everywhere. And as, as, they, as they really, demand is increasing in the lifetime, their, their, their existence is really going short. Government bureaucracies and high labor turnover, that's an, that's really big thing. It's not in the, in the hands of the entrepreneur's hand. Uncertainty in metal commodity prices. The steel is one big commodity which really fluctuates widely. So that is the main problem where the industries really get the cash locked up and they're not able to release it immediately. And what is the methodology I followed in studying the problem areas in this company? I followed, I, I read through the documented work process, personal interview with the key stakeholders, nearly around eight cities, review transactional records and statutory submissions for 21-22, corroborate the secondary data analysis for Indian industry norms, CNC and conventional machines, Stack up the power point, uh, stack up the company data presented in context, connected with related transactions. Make them to appreciate and realize the missing opportunities from the data analysis. Open up the willingness for process change, marginal investment, convincing particularly to convince the MD. Sell out on medium term strategies like three to five years, promising payback period less than two years. Exploit existing platforms like Zoho Cloud and Dali Cloud for data integration. The, as we keep talking about, the entire thing is about making money, means we got to sell it at high price and make it at low cost. In this environment, the main thing, main thing that drives these two objectives are how better you are utilizing your machines. So these are the four major, I had done around 12 parameters, but for want of time, I just picked up critical four parameters. The actual production hours versus total hours and setting time of the, setting time for each job. Machine breakdowns, though it's a new machines, but there is also a breakdown, breakdowns are there. No operator or setter, percentage of total available hours. All these things are on total available hours. In the first graph, you can see that one, 
okay that april and may was really a very bad in every all these parameters in april and may were very bad and from june onwards it started picking up april and may was uh, was a disturbance on the second covid threat hovering around and many of the operators who preferred not to really stay over here and just started packed and gone out because based on the first experience the people know that that at some point in time there's going to be a full lockout and they cannot really go out anywhere that was that was the problem otherwise once when the the threat was really over and uh, things become normal people started coming in and uh, the business uh, fallen better but if you see that with the lost graph the operator availabilities are getting lost all because the skill the operators need to be really handling both loading and unloading operations though it is an unprofessional and this is one of the main cause for the skill the operators not really staying in because they feel really honored only when their, their knowledge and experience is challenged and production of the jobs but when someone is really telling him oh you got to really download and upload the, the jobs from uh, the trucks they feel it they are really denigrated that was the main reason and this table shows that one uh, the the various data available the the emission productivity production hours are minimum is 43 percent and maximum is 80 percent and average is 53 percent and the industry norm is around 90 percent so there is a an opportunity there and machine setting hours are really varies between two hours one to two hours as sorry two to ten hours and the average is seven hours and the norm is three hours so the breakdowns in industrial norm is two hours but currently we have around maximum of nine hours no, no operator issues are industries do have a mechanized handling or otherwise a contracted material handling labors. And uh, uh, currently we face some problem in getting the people for unskilled the job, totally unskilled the jobs, we are not getting the people. That's a big challenge. And we are trying to get it from uh, outside the state, but now that's also started uh, coming down. So th there got to be a, some solution evolving around, but at this point in time, we do face a problem. Second thing is consumables, tools, and inserts is the second biggest cost driver. The second most cost driver is around 8 to 10 percent of the tools cost and uh, consumables. In this, turning tools contribute of this 8 to 10 percent, 40 percent of the cost goes on the turning tools. And the rest of the things goes for building, milling, and reaming, and all, the, all these types of tools. Uh, this item is a unique traceability problem. If you really want to control anything you got to have some reference but unfortunately the cutting inserts are so fast consumed and it is not marked with any unique identification so it's very difficult to find out how better each insert is used so currently it is only on an, an unconventional basis some marks are being made and and uh, ensure that when the, all the four, four, four corners are used effectively, there is always an opportunity to overlook full utilization of one or more cutting edges. Only indirect method is used to locate the poor utilization of the cutting edges. Currently, cost reduction benchmark is assigned on ship supervisor's responsibility. So ship supervisors compensation package includes a variable pay, which really show tied up to the how much reduction he is bringing in in making a good product. So that's a new 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 suggestion put forward to the management and the process. What process is also established that's being tried on a trial basis. Inset consumption is a measurable metrics for production supervisors monthly incentive. I said that one. Coolant oil, 50% of the total cost of this category. Rust oil and uh, seasonal con uh, consumption, it is sometimes 50% monthly cost, particularly on the rainy days. <coughs> Here, the what process is that once when the pod comes in, 
and we really turn it over to a conventional machinist for an outsourcing and they do all the excess materials and really give the finer material left out for cnc machine so in this flip-flop process it whenever it goes to an outsourcing guy he does not have the facility to store it either as a raw material or as a finished product so at the rainy time rainy days it always gets exposed onto uh, exposed onto the rainwater and get rusted so what the company what the study suggestion is in a cost benefit analysis it has been really concluded that it's better to participate financially with the outsourcing partner and put up a shelter so that they can hold it uh, Non-compliance report, as, as you all heard in the first presentation by another IIT graduate, that he was giving a focus on the quality control aspects. And here also the quality, we do have quality problem. And we classify the quality, source of quality issues on three major categories on the machining process, dimensional requirements, and surface finish. The company conducts stage inspection, establishes a gating process, holds the job until defect is repaired. The same go, no go, and all the other dimensional measurements and surface measurements, all these things part of it. Most of the operators have deficient skill set in machining process, threading operations, wrong mounting of the job in the machine to a tool table. This clearly shows the requirements of skill upgrade in the areas, and we are working with the close by ITIs and uh, polytechnics and the, the, those institutes are happily welcomed our requirements and they do want to participate with us and QHUC requirements are complied with the ISO 9001 requirements vendor requirements except for two operators skill upgrade, upgrading within the facilities are being designed and now that's being worked out and there is a frequent uh, team meetings and uh, some social dinner meetings we organize it to share the lessons learned uh, by various operators and uh, really put them in their language so that it reaches them it reaches them fully and that is working very well that has really pulled down the defects so these are all the these are all the major analysis I have done that one. Finally, the recommendations given is mainly on workflow process and upskilling the uh, operators and uh, promoting the outsourcing companies to really work within our requirements. Finally, making everyone in the company to fully aware of the data that gets generated from the various conversions and operations what they're doing. So currently there is in, in, in the recommendations provided, the company has fully accepted it and trying to put it up in a, in a prototype scale and uh, that's being getting monitored. And once when it is done, then we'll put up a detailed workflow process. And all those things will become part of the company procedure. That's all I need to tell. And uh, thanks for everyone for listening to me. And I'm I'm open for all your questions, and I will try my best to answer it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, I believe this was the last presentation. Uh, in case anybody has any comments or questions uh, regarding the same, please let us know. Um, we don't want to hold you back uh, from your uh, Sunday afternoon lunch. So <laughs> it would be nice if you come up with your questions right away. Thank you, Shukran. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, it is a honor to have uh, you as a participant. I think uh, I, I salute your zeal even with after uh, 41 years of experience you st still have uh, the spirit to learn something new and contribute for that i would be
I would have to appreciate thank you, thank you, sir, thank you for, for that. So, uh, just uh, two things in terms of uh, the skill loss, what you have uh, mentioned is one of your reasons for for that scenario. What exactly was your recommendation to the company? Uh, in fact, uh, there is one of the very best training institute is there in Coimbatore. Mm -hmm. And we went and discussed with there are there are nearly around ten institutes are there. And this is one of the very best one, and uh, probably it's in the pan India level. It is well heard of that with GD Naidu Training Institute, and that was the major producer of that, uh, the 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 mission. Yes, of late in the last one year, there is a big shift in in the students' preference. They're all moving away from CNC to AutoCAD and SolidWorks, mainly on the desk-based jobs. I see. And uh, mm -hmm. and the institute is giving a fully paid free training and accommodation, food and accommodation, and immediate okay. absorption after they finish the job successfully. Even that is not attracting the students to the full capacity. Only around five to ten guys are coming in. So mm -hmm. means there is a big shift of preference of the students. Ideally, it, it is very difficult for India to really continue the uh, labor intensive, frustrating, repetitive jobs. It's not the preference of the current generation in any level, whether it is an entry level or it's an experience level or whatever it is. So those are the days it was working. And currently what we are trying to do is we are giving a more self-esteem in the in the company it, we are not treating them as workers we are treating them as a sort of a partners and we mm -hmm. we tell them that they're running short of the capacity and knowledge is in that area and we are organizing them to really go and uh, work with the nearby institutes i think uh, so I, having... I think you have touched a uh, sorry to interrupt you sir uh, yeah, i think you have touched a very good point you have you are want them to make them as a kind of partners giving them as an esteem so you are trying to touch yes. their esteem need yes okay that's a very good thing and one second quick question on the depreciation how many i heard from your explanation that all the machines are new yes so how many years of depreciation you have considered in your value or the valuation portion currently it is uh, we are considered four years of depreciation Four years. Okay, that Four answers years. my question. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Uh If there is, uh, is there any other question on board? Uh, so uh, now I would like to uh, request uh, Bharti ma'am to please address the students and the guests for a couple of minutes. Hi, uh, good morning all. I'm Bharti and I manage the operations of the data science program basically. And uh, thank you all for sparing your time today on a Sunday to be here with us. And this was one of the flagship projects that we were thinking, you know, for the program that students should get a appreciation of, you know, how a customer should be approached, how a customer should be convinced of, you know, the value of sharing data and the insights that they would get and also appreciate how data is actually acquired by companies. It, it does not come clean and nice and uh, you know that you can just readily work on it or something but the steps probably before you can even process and analyze it is probably 80 percent of the you know entire thing and the analysis only comes later right so that is something we wanted the students to appreciate and also you know uh, get them used to the communication skills going and seeing the difficulty in uh, convincing these people telling them about the process and so on so that was one of the things and I think uh, that uh, objective is being achieved by us today. So in this regard, I would really like to thank uh, Dr. Ashwin, who is actually a doctor from our DOMS department of IIT Madras, currently a faculty at IESCG France. Uh, he's been the main uh, driving force behind, you know, improving the quality of the BDM projects, ensuring they all measure up to some standards and getting the students to do better and better at what they are doing in this process. Dr. Aditya is again uh, uh, 
uh, working with Ashwin in this. And he has also been a great force in giving feedback. So we have three stages of feedback before the final project actually comes out. So we have a proposal stage. We have a midterm uh, proposal or midterm uh, data that they submit to us and the final report. And after we okay it at every stage and that is done, then only they go in for a viva with our own people. And after we evaluate them, we start analyzing, okay, which are the best projects that we want to showcase. In fact, we have many, many more, I think, identified as best projects. We thought we'll start with this and we'll go on. So I would like to thank Dr. Aditya also here in this, uh, making this entire project, the BDM projects, you know, to be really relevant, come out with multiple businesses that are being showcased, the small shops, like you saw, the bigger businesses that are there, the different kinds of stakeholders in that who they are approaching and talking to. I think it's very important. Their contribution has been really nice in this. Also, we have a pool of TAs who have been doing the evaluation, also helping them out. I would like to acknowledge them in this, uh, uh, you know, uh, forum uh, that is here. And I hope the students who are watching this will actually get inspired to do better projects rather than do just for the sake of doing a project. The whole fun is, I think, in, you know, executing it and being a part of it and kind of getting into that uh, experience and saying, like, I did really help somebody or at least I know what is to be done. And after that, hope that they adopt whatever these people are saying. Uh, just to close it, we also are starting to work with small businesses and maybe some businesses that are open to, you know, working with us, sharing their real data and also taking some students as interns, senior people, junior people, we are matching them up and trying to see whether we can help them out because uh, maybe for small businesses, startups to afford data analysts at this stage may not be really accessible. They would be, you know, looking at getting the operations part and their uh, maybe finances part of their, uh, you know, uh, startups ready first before they get into this aspect of it. So we thought, why not try to help them with this part? And we are working with about five companies now. We have more requests coming in. So that is another thing, again, has been the initiative of uh, Dr. Ashwin and Dr. Aditya with the students. And we hope that they'll get a real world sense of also what is happening and we are able to help some companies in this uh, regard. So with respect to the industry professionals here, yes, thanks once again for being here today with us. We would like to know if you would uh, like to listen to more of such presentations or I would like a general feedback from you all on what you all saw. We showcased only five today. But in general, what is your feedback about the project? Whether we should uh, have any, uh, whether you have any suggestions about the general way in which the projects are done or you think it is okay for a student-driven project at the diploma level of the program? Uh, thank you so much for the initiative, Bharti ji. Uh, I would strongly recommend these kind of projects, for sure. But uh, I would, uh, I, I think for all the presentations, I could see a problem statement. There is a pain, there is a need to get it studied and get it to be resolved. So my general suggestion would be on the PDCA cycle, right? So this is what I could recommend to one of the participants. Like he went to a nearby optical shop and he could uh, suggest them a particular plan. And like, I also like uh, the comment what you have made, like all these uh, small establishment, they cannot afford a data science grads or diploma students. So the su suggestion, what your student has offered and how it could be applied and how much uh, 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 the revenue generation or the pain point resolution is happening it's a very good feedback and those case studies with the results with the follow-up action down the line like three months six months that could be a very good reference for uh, the students so that they can say and it's also the value what they are giving back so that portion i would like to uh, emphasize to consider that's all i appreciate the initiative and Thank you all for this opportunity. Thank you, Kamala, ma'am, for giving me this opportunity to be part of this panel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, anyone else has any feedback? We'd just like to listen to you. Mr. Biju, I think you're on mute. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think this was a nice presentation. And uh, uh, mm -hmm. it is a true industry academy collaboration. Uh, basically, the students uh, get to know the uh, uh, industry point of view also, uh, how these uh, projects uh, should be taken to the next level. And uh, uh, well, uh, it is a real validation uh, with respect to the industry scenario. And uh, the kind of projects when I look at, most of the projects are only focusing uh, on the operations and uh, quality enhancements or uh, efficiency improvement. Uh, so that is also a good one. And uh, I think actually, 
uh, there are a lot of other scopes uh, from the data science point of view. Probably, I should know students can touch up some uh, projects based on computer vision. Okay, uh, because uh, I have seen actually uh, the machine uh, analytics uh, using computer vision on the uh, safety improvements uh, or the entire process efficiency improvements also people are you know, doing. Um, so these kind of projects and study, uh, if we are doing, that will be uh, really useful uh, uh, in these kind of forums. Yeah. Sure, sir. Thank you. We'll take that into account. Yeah, and thank you. Thank you so much uh, for giving uh, me the opportunity. And thank you, Kamala, uh, for uh, partnering with us. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Ashwin, would you like to just close? Because you have seen the projects very closely. Do you have something to add here? Uh, yeah, so um, thank you. Um, so it was um, a good presentation. And with regard to the first point, which uh, and Sir mentioned, we have been working on a longitudinal front, meaning to say that um, uh, we have been working with companies now, some three companies we have shortlisted. And in the next three to four months, we will be knowing, we have, we have started with the projects and we will be knowing what is the outcome in the next six months time. So we, we have been working on that front, but uh, thank you for the feedback. And it was uh, a good experience for us as well. And we'll definitely work on the pointers we have mentioned because the objective is to showcase uh, uh, the students who have done some quality work and we continuously strive hard to improve and take it to the next level. So um, thank you, everybody. I also see that there is a hand from uh, Mr. Manikandan. Hey, hello. Hey, sorry, I'm traveling. So that's why I'm not able to come on, to, on the camera. So thanks, uh, Kamala, madam, for the reminder. So I was able to join in time and listen to all the presentations. Uh, like uh, Bharti ma'am said, yes, definitely there's a lot of difference between doing and uh, from an academic angle and then doing it from an industry perspective. I think that's the great uh, bridge, actually, uh, getting that experience going, a uh, lot of stakeholder management and challenges on the ground. And uh, as uh, Dr. Ashwin also pointed out, I think uh, the follow-up will be very critical and also uh, you know, they have to actually think about uh, you know, how to implement it on a regular closed loop cycle. So which means the one time implementation, how it can become yeah, uh, like in a closed loop cycle, how the data pipelines will actually come, how the, if the data drift is happening, how it can, we can actually automate the entire thing with an ML ops cycle. So an end to end life cycle uh, with respect to uh, uh, the entire implementation, if they are able to you know, think through that, and at least if they are not implementing it, but they are able to uh, do the thought process, I think that will uh, be an edge for uh, people who are moving into, uh, into the real-time projects. But great presentations. I think uh, definitely uh, we would uh, you know, like to spend more time with these projects and see how we can also contribute. Sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, feedback. We'll definitely see how we can collaborate uh, further. Um, yeah. That's okay, ma'am. I'll take over here. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, Kamala, ma'am, any last words for, for the audience? Yeah. Um, yeah, first of all, thank you. Thank you so much, um, uh, Sukrat, for putting this uh, show together. And all my friends from the industry, uh, I mean, I was just pinging you, messaging you, writing to you. I apologize for all those, you know, too many messages perhaps. But then, you know, I'm very happy to see all of you attend this session. Uh, so we will be having similar sessions in the future also. I'll reach out to you. If you have the time, please join us. And this was kind of our way to showcase the students' projects and, uh, you know, through the projects, our students. So a big thanks to all the students. And I think one of them who could not join here due to some medical emergency, a great presentations. Thank you all so much. And um, uh, Dr. Ashwin, uh, again, thanks for, you know, guiding them all the way through um, uh, and Aditya also. So yeah, once again, thank you, thank you. I think I have reached out to all of you regarding our placement drive coming up in May. I hope that you know you can see similar present uh, students and present in the drive. So we hope that you participate in this very first placement drive as well. So thank you, thank thank you very much, thank you all. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, with this, I think uh, we will conclude this uh, event. Uh, thank you so much for attending, all participants, all uh, guests, everybody who asked questions and paid attention. We owe you a lot. Thank you so much. Uh, and have a very pleasant Sunday and the week ahead. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye.
thank you thank you thank you bye Uh, Balaji sir, uh, can you please uh, turn the streaming off? Yeah, thanks, Balaji. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Jinky sir. Uh, you just uh, 